Today we're speaking with Dave Prevo. He's the transportation manager for Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools. I'm very happy to have him here. And the reason why we have him here today is we're going to talk about what it takes to make a decision if school buses should run on those days when, let's just say, it's slippery outside or when there's snow on the ground. Uh, he's the one that is driving and, and determining if the roads are good enough uh, for our buses to get on the road. And of course, uh, we've got way more information for you. Stay tuned. This is NLPS Ed Talks, a podcast brought to you by Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools. I'm Dale Burgos, the Executive Director of Communications, and I'll be sharing conversations with students, staff, and friends of the district. We'll learn, we'll laugh, we may cry, but most importantly, we'll share the unique stories of individuals that work and play in our school system. Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools is one of many school districts in British Columbia, Canada, and is centrally located in one of the most beautiful places in the world, Vancouver Island. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Prevo, how are you today? Good afternoon, Dale. I'm doing extremely well. Thank you so much. Perfect. So thank you for joining us on NLPS Ed Talks. This is our new podcast. Uh, you are now our third interview. Uh, very excited because uh, we are now heading into, I'll call it the winter season. Uh, now, uh, I mean, I was born on the in the prairies. There's winter there and there's winter here. It's a little bit different. But uh, what I've learned very quickly is that uh, when snow's on the ground here, it is very different and it's different to drive on. Uh, and uh, the, it, hey, I got winter tires for the first time in my life two years ago, put snow tires on my car because that's just how different it is to drive here on Vancouver Island. So first off, uh, Dave, let's let's get a quick introduction, name and title. Thank you, Dale. My name is Dave Prevo. As you mentioned, I'm the transportation manager, being with the Nanaimo School District now for uh, about 17 and a half years. And prior to that, I spent uh, some years with the uh, School District 28 in Quinnell and School District 70 in Port Alberni. Wow, fantastic. And I have to say, you've got that radio voice. You've got that radio voice, Dave. <laughs> I love it because it's um, uh, maybe it's something you can do on the side. If you're not busy enough with transportation managing, uh, you can you can also do the radio gig. I think that would be pretty good. That sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like the guys on the radio do have a lot of fun. <laughs> they so. do have a lot of fun. We can have a lot of fun here too. But more on the serious side of things and the reason why you're here uh, is the process that it takes uh, for the district to determine if it is safe to drive for our school buses out there. Uh, first off, let's just talk about the reason why we would want to take this practice, uh, why we would want the school buses on the road on certain days. Tell me about that. Well, obviously, we're number one factor in, in school busing is safety. So we're always, always uh, everything we do is safety related and, and certainly road conditions uh, where the rubber hits the road are, is number one for us. So. Yes, exactly. That's right. We, we want to make sure that uh, once the kids are on, on the bus, that they continue to be safe. Now, uh, let's start the process now, right? Let's just say, hey, look, weather forecast coming up. Looks like it might be a little cold, might be some snow coming in the in the horizon. So what do you do on those nights when we have those forecasts? So Dale, all the time in the wintertime, I'm, I'm watching the weather forecast. I'm watching the temperatures. Uh, and as we know, they're not always correct, the, the weather forecasts and such. So we have to be very careful. So I'm, I'm largely watching temperatures. I'm watching satellite you know, forecasts, different things like that. So um, I watch many different types of forecasts as well, any news I can get on the on the internet, that sort of thing. And we also have some some good information coming to us through the school district as well that uh, the city of Nanaimo uses their forecaster. So we use that as well, and, and the BIU uses it as well. So it's, you know, we watch them very closely. So it's obviously very, very weather-related. Right. And uh, I'm always watching the weather this time of year and watching the temperatures and... and uh, you know, things can change very quickly for us. Uh, yes, they can. I've heard the stories where, um, I, I, quite literally, overnight we've we've got a dump of snow and there could be two, three feet on the ground. That is, that's definitely possible. So you mentioned forecasts. When you're looking at forecasts, it, like what um, what temperatures, what sort of weather forecasts are you looking at? I'm looking at any precipitation coming our way, Dale, and and largely, you know, in relating that to the temperatures. And, you know, our district varies so much. We've got everything from sea level to, you know, a little bit of mountainous uh, conditions. So um, they can also fluctuate very largely just within our district as well. Okay. And and because I'm, sort, I'm part of that process uh, in the morning, uh, determining um, or, or rather communicating when schools are open or closed during during those times of, of uh, inclement weather. Um, it, it's it's a process, Dave, and, and maybe you can give us a little explanation on, on what you do uh, once you have seen the forecast 
uh, determine that there might be some weather coming our way, what do you do? So anytime the weather is looking like it could be inclement, and it, whether it's ice or snow, uh, both you know are, are huge factors for us. I will watch the weather, like I said, very closely, forecast. I'll get up at, uh, usually get up at about 1.30 a.m. and uh, look at the what the weather is doing, what the temperatures are. I'll look at highway cams, which is another really valuable tool to us. And uh, I'll make a decision where I, whether I think I should, should head out or not. And if I do, I now live out near Spider Lake, so I, I'm a little ways out of Nanaimo. So, it, you know, in the bad weather, it could take me a, a good 45 minutes to an hour to get here. So I know I need to be leaving by about 1 30, 2 o'clock at the absolute latest. So uh, when I leave there, I, I have my own car and I, I have a four-wheel drive. So what I do is I come through uh, to North Nanaimo. I'll check the roads in Lanceville, North Nanaimo, uh, Jingle Pot Road, uh, in and around back to, to our shop here in, in South Nanaimo, and where I'll get the shop truck, uh, which is also a four-wheel drive. Then I, I will head out to, up towards Extension uh, into Ladysmith and, and uh, usually out, out towards Cedar by the Sea and Cleet Bay and Yellow Point and all those areas as well and then come back into town. Usually when I'm coming back in through Cedar that's when I my magic time is to, to call my boss Pete Sabo and and get uh, some information to him as well. So uh, we also if if it's not a, a weather day where there I don't if I don't think that there's going to be any issues running our buses uh, I'll ge generally just send an email to to Pete Sabo and and let him know that I've checked the roads and I'm comfortable running the buses. Right, excellent. Okay, so Pete Sabo is our Director of Planning and Operations, uh, and he's, of course, the one that you uh, directly report to. So um, you, when I first found out that you get up that early in the morning and start driving, uh, first I thought, what? With a big question mark on it and exclamation afterwards. Uh, but uh, that's what it takes. I mean, you're, you're out on the road, so it sounds like by the time you, you do your routes, you get back, it's roughly just after 5 o'clock or so by the time you get back to the office after you've done the route. Usually I'm still coming back in. I'll phone Pete, as I mentioned, uh, from the Cedar area, so I'm still probably you know up to a half an hour away from the shop, but I, I need to get that, that information out as quickly as I wow, can. Wow, fantastic. I, I, I appreciate that, Dave, because uh, that, that is quite early, and that probably would explain a lot of the times when I see you in the wintertime uh, at about noon. <laughs> looks like you're about ready for a nap. Uh, and, and Probably already had one. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now, you're, you're back at the shop. You've already um, put in that uh, call to, uh, uh, to Mr. Sabo, uh, the, again, the Director of Planning and Operations. Uh, so I, I can explain a little bit about what happens after that fact, because once you've reported to him, uh, essentially, that uh, the roads are, are, are good or the buses will, you believe the buses should run, uh, determining the weather or that they shouldn't run. Uh, really what happens after that then is uh, Pete Sabo shares that information with the superintendent. I'd also like to explain a little bit about the process. So once the decision is made shortly after 6 a.m., uh, we, we try and make that decision by 6.30. Now there are four possibilities when it comes to uh, inclement weather. Uh, we look at one, close schools. Option two, cancel bus runs but leave schools open. The third option, cancel special needs buses, but other buses run and schools are open. And there's a last option, number four, schools are open and buses are running. At that point, really the superintendent uh, takes the information that you've shared, uh, also speaks with some of the partners in the community, whether it be City of Nanaimo um, or the RDN. Uh, we even check in with uh, Vancouver Island University as well, just to see what their uh, decision is on, on running uh, their equipment on the road, right? And and that's really important because, of course, we want to uh, stay consistent with all of our partners. But um, at the same time for you, like you said, your priority is safety, correct? That's definitely correct, Elias. Yes. yes, okay. Uh, and, and really the next step after that, I, again, Dave, I'm going to just share this with everyone here. What happens, superintendent receives the information, and um, shortly after 6 o'clock, uh, wh whoever it is, the superintendent of the day, uh, in this case, Scott Saywell uh, will be connecting with me, and then and then he he lets me know what the decision is, uh, and then at that point we start sharing that information with the with the community. Now I, I want to point out in the past what's what's happened is uh, we would only communicate to families or the community whenever there would be. Um, school, uh, rather school bus cancellations or school closures. Uh, in the age of information, it's changed a little bit. And people, uh, even though you know we haven't put something out there officially, um, they may question, should, should I still get my kid on the bus? Or is the bus still coming? Uh, or, okay, well, the bus isn't coming. Is school still open? Right? Those, those are all the questions that they ask. And, and quite 
quite realistically, it's 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 very easy to share the information, Dave. So so what I do is we typically sh we, we send an email out to uh, principals they so that they know right away if their schools are open or closed. Uh, and then what we'd also do is share it through social media. Uh, we have a um, a media list that we send it out to so that our uh, radio stations, TV stations would know right away. And and again, thanks to our partners out there in the community, our radio stations, for example, uh, they right away are, are out there and sharing that message, whether it is open or closed. Uh, because there are those questionable days where uh, I mean, our district is quite large, uh, and geographically speaking, it could be very different from the south side to the north side and vice versa. So it could be snowing and, and, and so on and so forth. We try and make that decision uh, the same across the district so that there isn't just half of the district with no school and the other half with school. Uh, it's much easier to move things forward by it being a uh, complete decision across the district. Again, that's the plan. So, again, thanks to our radio stations for doing that. Social media is a big piece. And then with this year, we've uh, implemented so, uh, School Messenger. And, and what that is, it's a direct mail, uh, email, or call to uh, families out there. Uh, and what's great is that um, we've got updated lists every day uh, through our um, databases so that all parents, whether they just registered as a child yesterday, and as long as they're in the system, they'll get that email, right? So that's really good. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. I mean, what happens is we try and get that out, that, that information out between 6 and 7. There's a bus really early, right, Dave, that comes uh, from Gabriel Island. Correct. Right? The Gabriel bus starts picking up students about 6.35. Yeah, yes. they're an early one. And so yes. we had heard from parents there saying that they'd like to know earlier. So we adjusted our times on delivery and letting people know. And, and thanks to Dave and his team for, uh, uh, for letting us know <laughs> that early. Dave, again, thanks for driving that early. Uh, and those parents, uh, from what I hear, have been happy with, with the change. And I believe we started that in the last last school year and so that seems to be working we'll continue to do it that way uh, we will strive to um, if we have that decision whether school buses are running or not running uh, that places like gabriel island will know right away there's there's some other communities where their kids are on buses a little bit earlier as well so they would appreciate that same uh, that same piece of, of getting that information nice and early uh, typically what we would want though is is seven o'clock would be where the decision would would be the final decision and that's when people would know that um, that's what we're doing for the day, right? right? Now, Dave, did I miss anything in the process here? No, I don't think so, Dale. I, I'm, you know, the, the big thing is for us is, is obviously, again, student safety. And um, it's, it's a tough decision to make to, to run buses or not or to close schools or not. It's, it's uh, like we mentioned, uh, one end of our district could have no snow on the, the roads or no ice, and the other end could have a, a foot of snow and, and a bunch of ice. So it's a really difficult decision to make. And as you mentioned, with the schools, we don't cancel partial bus runs. Uh, it, it, we, we worry about the communication of such and leaving students at risk when there's no bus coming is not a good idea so um, again uh, we will endeavor to to transport the students safely and I thank you Dale and your department for all the communications you people do you guys are amazing well I think it's great it's we work in tandem right and thank you for that but um, you know we, we couldn't share the information unless we had the information which is of course <laughs> uh, you're a big part of it uh, Dave a little bit about um, uh, some of the questions that we received because there are some comments from the community about you know why are we canceling buses and then why would you th why would you think that it would be safe for us as a parent or a guardian to drive our kids to school? Uh, so we cancel buses. This is the example. We cancel buses, but school's still open. So we, we have some of those comments from parents. And uh, I mean, it's it's not it's it's not really a cut or dry thing. I mean, buses are much larger uh, than than passenger vehicles. But maybe explain a little bit more about that. Not 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 about answering the parents, but really why it's not safe for a bus to be on the road. Okay, I drove school bus in the Port Alberni School District for almost ten years, so I realize how important it is for a bus to actually stop. Um, and uh, you know, and that's really what I judge my decision on. I don't make decisions. Sorry, I, I judge my recommendations on is. Um, the stopping conditions you know I, I often will and I hope you're not driving behind me as I'm checking roads because I'll often just jam on the brakes to see what kind of braking I have okay. and if I have nothing that's a good indication the buses won't be running and again it's it's hard from one end of the district to the other because it might be really nice down here in Nanaimo but up in extension and out in Cedar it, it may be much much worse so Yes. You know, it is very difficult. Agreed. Okay. And then there's also some of the comments which you would not have seen, but these are some of the comments where uh, parents um, saying that they uh, 
don't want to bring their kids to school because they don't want to drive on the road. And and to be clear, I mean, we, we will never make that decision for a parent to say that they should or should not bring their kids to school. If they're not comfortable to be on the road, definitely don't drive on the road. But um, if you are confident and if you want your, your kid to get to school uh, or if you have work and you can't miss work and the, and the school's open, uh, then, then by all means you can drop your kids off even though the buses are not running. So there's, there's also that piece. So in the end, we want to make sure that parents ultimately have the final say in determining if their if their kids come to school or not and that's one of those 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 big pieces that I think um, in, in seeing a lot of the feedback and questions coming from from families is is that um, is that is well the buses aren't running so then you know I have to get my kids to school uh, and again like I said that's that's really up to the parents so uh, that's very important and and really I think that's that's it I mean I, I appreciate your time Dave I think that we've Thank covered you. everything unless you think that we've maybe missed something no, I think you've covered everything, yeah. Dale, and I, I do think it's a very important matter to get out on a podcast so people right. understand what we we what we go through to make these decisions. And and like I said, they are not easy to make for anybody. No, not at all. And and you're right, I mean, because we can't. Um, I'll, I'll say that I'm. I've seen it. We we can't make everybody happy yeah. all the time, um, but we try and make the best decision uh, for the entire district for all the students, and of course through their safety and. Um, uh, and, and that's that's what we'll continue to do as as a school just district. We'll we'll try and make those decisions. Dave, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. I'm not gonna, you know, maybe I'll actually bring up one more thing here. Your last name Prevo, right? Uh, is is there not a, a transportation or a, a bus company? <laughs> is there a relation? Is there not a Prevo? Uh, I wish there was or a relation. I, I attended a, a conference in in Penticton, <laughs> and and the Prevo bus company was at that convention. Oh, so okay. I tried to weasel in and yes. pretend I was family, but they yeah. they had none of it. Uh, <sighs> they did give me a belt buckle with a Prevo name on it, which did I gave, they? gave to my dad. But uh, I love it. You know, but yeah, no, there's a Mount Prevo. There was a really <laughs> popular doctor in Victoria by the name of Prevo. Oh, so yeah, there you it's, go. Uh, <laughs> no no relations at all. Okay, to me, so. So you have some options. So if, if this transportation thing doesn't work out, you can do radio. You can go work for the family business, right? Or there's a doctor out in Victoria that you can maybe right. weasel your way into, like you said. <laughs> Anyways, Dave, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll have you back if there's some new information that we can maybe share with everyone out there. This has been NLPS Ed Talks. Have yourself a great day.